So I'm doing two things today. Like I said on the uh, data log, I noticed that the um, basically the intake is choking at a high RPM. You can tell that by the way the map sensor starts to drop down in the uh, atmospheric pressure. Um, I think like 14.2 is basically like wide open and it's getting the air that the engine is consuming. It's able to suck in what it's uh, basically needing. And then like, you know, 5,000, 6,000 RPM, you see that map pressure start to drop, which means it's actually slowly starting to move towards like the creating a vacuum scenario where the engine is consuming more air than it's actually able to suck in. So the motor is actually starting to create a little bit of, a, um, like I said, it's heading towards the direction of vacuum where the most efficient uh, map rating possible is like more atmospheric pressure. Uh, anything less than that is not um, efficient. So I'm going to put in this cheapy eBay or I got it off of Amazon. Actually, this Amazon colder intake. It's like just a basic four inch aluminum pipe with an open cone filter. Um, I've seen some people just do the pipe to the stock air box. But I don't feel like spending money on a cane. And I am about to supercharge this thing. I don't want to waste too much money. And the plan is to actually flip that colder intake, the four inch piping this way. And then from there, I'm going to route it uh, through the intercooler in the front. I've already been making room up here. So it's just kind of an experiment, really, to see if the Amazon uh, quarter intake frees up some power and changes those map readings I was telling you about. And along with that, I'm wiring up my electric fans. Um, so if you have a turbo supercharger setup and you're trying to run like an intercooler on a Silverado, it's a lot easier if you have the, narrow, the, the skinnier... I say skinnier, but it's narrow. It's a 28 inch wide radiator. This radiator went from like 99 to 04. Um, I think heavy duties actually had the 34 inch, but in 05, they all started having the 34 inch wide radiator with the electric fans. But this being a 2001, it's still got the narrow. And it's a lot more convenient because you have more room to run your piping. I already kind of opened up this spot right here for some piping to come through. Um, but yeah, the 28 inch radiator does not fit factory electric fans that came in 05 and up. But a, a, an easy solution to that, my favorite solution is to run this giant single blade fan from like a Ford Thunderbird, Thunderbird or um, I think they're calling like Mark 8s. It's like an 18 inch gigantic two speed fan and it pulls a ton of CFM. It's gigantic. And right now I have it off center. You can center it up and it only leaves like maybe two inches on each side of the radiator. But I have it, I have the center of the fan centered with the water pump pulley. That's just because that's the way I, you know, I prefer it. Um, and it's all the way tucked up against this side. But like I said, you can center it up if you want to. And this thing pulls a ton of air, a lot. I think it's like 4,000 CFM or something stupid. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that installed, the quarter intake. I'm going to get the fan installed and kind of show you the way I, a quick way i like to do it without like temperature probes or um wire harnesses or anything like that i'm just gonna do like this simple cheap way for now and then eventually i'll do it more legit or whatever anyways let me get this quarter intake and get it installed all right so i've got the cheesy quarter intake installed through amazon like i said it is a four inch pipe and this is more about it's um breathing better not so much a you know colder intake because let's face it it's sucked in more engine bay air than it was before from the factory because the stock air box pulls in air from the fender through this big opening here and it probably does it better at keeping iet's lower like an idle and stuff like that but honestly when you're moving when you're up to speed there's so much airflow coming through the grill especially right now that it's wide open that um, it probably, honestly, the IATs will be the same regardless uh, if you're up to speed, like going highway speeds, because there's so much air going into the bay. But at idle, I would say that this would obviously do worse as far as IATs go. Anyways, like I said, this is about unchoking it, because we saw those map ratings drop, like the engine was um, kind of choking at, at you know high RPM. Um, and I also got the huge four Taurus fan wired up. I think it's like an 18 inch fan, like I said. The way I do it is really simple. It's kind of just like a mock-up for now, but I have a feasible link up here. 12 gauge going straight to the alternator. Um, 12 gauge going from the relay to the fan. And then a simple ground and a simple trigger. In this case, my trigger was um, <laughs> something kind of unique, I guess. Because I have mounted up like aftermarket switches before. And this time around, I didn't want to do an aftermarket switch. So to turn on the fans, it's uh, the fog light button. So when that light's on, that means my fans are pulling air. And these suckers do move a lot of air.
anyways um so on hp tutors like in my one of my last videos i was able to do like a i'm gonna call it like a virtual dyno information here and what I'm going to be showing you is a uh, map sensor PSI RPM torque and horsepower and um, basically with this information we can know that this cheap Amazon uh, intake is actually doing its job it's flowing a lot better and it's able to uh, keep up with the demands of the engine um, so above we have the after below is before so before we're both we're gonna start off at 4,000 RPMs, and look at the map sensor reading. The lower the number, the less efficient the airflow um, is to the engine. Basically, it's not uh, able to keep up with the, the demand that the airflow needs. So the lower the psi, that's basically the engine struggling to breathe. The lower that number is at wide open throttle, and the higher it is the more free flowing, the more efficient that uh, air induction is. So anyways, at 4,000 RPM, uh, no changes to fueling or anything. Um, we can notice the AFR is different. It leaned out a bit with the four inch intake from a 12.4 to 12.8. And I do run kind of rich where peak torque production is because I've noticed for like peak torque it likes to be on the richer side and then for peak horsepower it likes to be on the leaner side so it kind of goes from rich to lean um, anyways so at 4,000 rpm on both uh, before which is down here and after which is on top we're looking at 351 foot-pounds and at 377 foot-pounds um, and as far as horsepower, before we're looking at 267, and above we're looking at 287. So that's, um, let's see, 26 foot-pounds of torque increase and 20 horsepower increase already at 4,000 RPM. So let's take it to um, 5,000 RPM. And before I do that, again, notice the map sensor. The 4-inch intake is more free-flowing. You can definitely notice that. And the green line here is the map sensor, and it tapers off as the RPMs increase with the stock air intake. So basically, the more it revved up, the more it was choked. And above, the map sensor is flatlined with the 4-inch Amazon intake, which means that it was, you know, like I said, it would keep up with the demand of the airflow. So let's um, take the before to, let's say, I'm going to go 5,000 RPM. Okay, here's our 5,000 RPM stats down there. Let me take it out to 5,000 on the after. And we're going to kind of compare just before and after. Okay, so let's look at the before. 5,000 RPM. Um, 12.6 AFR. Map reading 13.9. So at 5,000, it's really started to choke. That map sensor reading has started to drop quite a bit. Uh, torque, we're at 325 and 309. 12.6 AFR, 13.9 map reading. And if I go directly up to the after, uh, AFR is pretty much the same. Map reading is higher. Uh, torque is up a lot, um, almost 30 foot pounds at 5,000 RPM. Uh, horsepower is up almost 30. Um, I believe that's like 27 horsepower. Um, yeah, that's quite a significant increase from just no, nothing is different. All I did is slap on the uh, four inch intake and um, make a pull. <laughs> that's I didn't do anything different. Um, okay, let's take it out to 6,000 RPM, which is where we're going to probably see the biggest difference because that's where it was choking the most. 
So I'm taking the before graph out to 6,000. You know what, let's do 59, because I think I'm shifting at 59. So I'm gonna take it to as close to 59 as I can. That's the before. Let's go up here to the after. Go to 50, get as close to 59. Okay, so down here at the before. 13.7 on that map reading. That is really being restricted and choked off. It is, it is not breathing well. That's what that tells you. That map reading tells you a lot of, what, of how efficient this engine is running. So let's see here. Torque, we're at 309. Horsepower, 346. Map PSI, 13.7. 5900. Let's kind of zoom out to the after. Uh, torque is 330. So that's up 21 foot pounds. Horsepower is at 371. Um, that is up 25 horsepower at 5,900. And the map reading is higher, which again, it means it's uh, flowing more efficiently. So I'm, I'm really impressed, honestly, with this colder intake. Uh, like I said, it's not... It's probably not doing much for IATs like idling because, you know, it doesn't really seal, seal it off from the engine bay. It's kind of a hot air intake, but you can't deny that it is a larger tube, has a more free-flowing air filter, and the results speak for themselves. Like this, you can't make this stuff up. It is, this doesn't lie, basically. Um, and look, the, this red line is a torque curve. It, it's kind of peaky and drops as it starts to choke. But the after torque curve, it's flatter. It makes more torque, and for a longer period of time, it, it drags out that torque a lot further <clears throat> in the RPM range. Um, let's go ahead and look at peak numbers. I'm gonna find the peak torque before, so far, I think 362. Is 362 my peak torque? Let's see, 360. Okay, so before 362 is the peak torque at 3650. Let me make sure. Yeah, 3650. It didn't make any more torque past 33,650 RPM. That was peak. So with the after, I'm assuming it made more torque further out in the RPM range. Yeah, it's uh, three. <laughs> We're already up quite a bit. 374, I saw. 375. 379 I'm trying to find the peak here I'm not even sure what the peak is I saw through a quick blip of 379 right 4,000 uh, basically 4,300 rpms so peak torque got extended out um, almost 700 600 rpm from 3650 uh, peak torque is now out at 420 4300 and um, let's see we are up Peak torque is up eight, um, 17 foot pounds. That's uh, that's that's a good amount. Let's look at peak horsepower before. Peak horsepower was let's see, 347. Let me make sure that's the peak. Yeah, 347 is the peak before. Let's find the peak after. I think it was 375 375 so before 347 after is 375 